Hello and welcome to Capacity Middle East Extra, powered by JSA. That's right, we are JSA and I am Dean Perrine, coming to you live on location at the beautiful Grand Hyatt Dubai for Capacity Middle East. And I am about to conduct my very last interview of the entire event. And without further ado, let me introduce you to my new friend, Mr. Sohail Cutter. Sohail is the VP of Wholesale for Omentel. So, Hale, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being my very last interview of the entire day. Thank you, Dean. And I'm glad to be the last one. <laughs> <laughs> me too, my yeah. friend. Me too. But So, for our viewers that don't already know, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Omentel? Yeah. So, my name is Sohail Kadir, and uh, I'm the vice president of uh, Omentel, Oman telecommunication company. Obviously, Omentel is an incumbent operator in the Sultanate of Oman uh, with a mobile fixed and every network. But... We also have what we call it wholesale business unit. Mm -hmm. In wholesale business unit, we are basically responsible for investment in submarine cables, roaming, voice, and everything else, but mainly focus on submarine side and especially from the event point of view. Uh, as Omantel, we have been investing since uh, 2000 and I would say nine mm -hmm. uh, into submarine cable systems. And today we are landing around 15 submarine cable systems in Oman. That is already active up and running. Congratulations. Uh, That's very, very cool. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. And uh, by 2024, we will have four more landings over there. So we are talking about 19 cable systems with us. And obviously, with our partners or our yes. other operators in the country, we have already two cable systems. So we are talking about a country with around 21 to 22 submarine cable systems. So obviously, with this kind of infrastructure that you have in the in the, in, in, in any country, you're basically creating it as, as a place where everyone can come and transit. Yeah. So... Part of our uh, strategy was not only to invest in infrastructure, but also to create the environment. So in 2017, we entered into a joint venture with Equinix. Uh, it's a relationship which is a you know a joint relationship yes, between yes. us and Equinix. And we have deployed in 2020 the first data center called MC1. And uh, nowadays we are under deployment another data center in Salala, which is called SN1. And these are going to be the two hubs of, let's say, the connectivity in the region. Uh, obviously, with this environment and the infrastructure, we have obviously attracted a lot of hyperscalers who are sitting in Oman and serving the whole region from here. Mm -hmm. So this is what we do. Yeah, no, that is uh, a, quite an accomplishment. Um, Thank it, you very it, much. It, it seems like um, we went from one, two, three, four, and then the next thing we're, we're talking, uh, you know, uh, in, in the 20s. So yes. uh, that, is, that is quite an accomplishment. Yes. So, um, but let's talk a little bit about, um, let's talk a little bit about the show. Um, I have noticed that there is business quite literally happening all up and down the foyer here yes. today on, the, on quite literally the last day of the show. Has it been a good show for you? Uh, I think... Capacity Middle East has always been the best in the region. Uh, this is my 12th, I would mm -hmm. say, or 14th, 14th actually, attendance in the Capacity Middle East. Uh, this show itself, I think last year was uh, was the first show after COVID, yes. unfortunate COVID. And now this is the second one. And this is very special because I see that people who want to make, uh, you know, some change, yeah, uh, they are here. So we are having very good meetings. Uh, as a team, we are around 22 people over here uh, from our company and our uh, partners. And uh, we had around 45 meetings each. So Wow, yeah. that, that has a good show for so, you. So I think I'm beating your record. <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> are. I'm just glad that it's winding down yeah. for the both of us, yeah. right? Um, but um, yeah, change. You mentioned change. Um, that's how it feels to me too. Um, I Like I said, we have done approximately upwards of 30 interviews. Yeah. Uh, and there is a theme, and that theme is change. And that theme also feels like global change. Uh, we're here in the Middle East, but ultimately it feels like we are talking about... Um, uh, what the world is going to look like over the next decade or two decades and, and the work that you and, and companies like you are doing in this region of the country to make sure that the entire world stays present. Yep. Yeah. So I think very you know relevant uh, point and the relevant word change. Uh, over the last, let's say, 10 years mm -hmm. or even let me take five years, it absolutely, abs yeah. everything has changed. Yeah. Uh, Operator like us selling, let's say, 10 Gs. No, nobody talks to us for 10 Gs. Top people talk to us terabits of capacity. Yeah. Hyperscalers are coming into this region. Their presence is increasing on a day-on-day -day basis. Uh, and the capacity requirements in this region have grown from, by at least, I would say, 45 to 50% in the last two years. 
and that requires a lot of investment yeah. to fulfill those demand now importantly this demand is not coming from the local operators in the region this demand is actually coming from the hyperscalers because they are coming closer to their eyeballs yeah and for the local operators just to go and to connect to them they need local in infrastructure within this region but then hyperscalers require a global infrastructure to connect back to their mm -hmm. data centers and all those so i would say there's huge changes coming in and we see this you know continuing for another 5 to 8 years mm -hmm. and i think this will change a lot more other things so the the speed of that change does it create challenges and what are those challenges a lot of challenges i would say <laughs> <laughs> give us one i think one of the biggest challenge i would say uh, because of the speed of these changes yeah. is coping coping up with the the demand mm -hmm. uh, fortunately or unfortunately in this industry setting up an infrastructure takes at least 4 to 5 years mm -hmm. building a new submarine cables to start from starting a discussion with partners and then rfs i would say 4 years minimum yeah now in that those 4 years you will be going through a period which is called crunch period that you don't have capacities and you have customers who are coming and asking for the for 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 a lot of dim, uh, you know capacities and and backhauls and all those kind of things the second challenge i think uh, which was previously and is going off is waiting but still it's there is the logistic part in the last two years unfortunately we have seen the deliveries from our suppliers supply chain yeah. yeah it was it was a disaster yeah. we, we have seen you know and you're not alone everybody a year and yeah. a half for delivering of the content mm -hmm. or or the cards and those kind of thing it is improving but mm -hmm. still we are not back to 2019 right because what happened was during the covid a lot of companies including ourselves they put up a huge orders because mm -hmm. they saw the demand coming yeah, in yeah, yeah. now those demand is not continuing forever but those orders are already in place so the suppliers are uh, already choked up mm -hmm. so we are hoping that by the end of this year we will go back to normal but still we are not in normal It does feel like we are getting back to normal though, doesn't it? We are. Yes. Yeah. Well, COVID, uh, you know. Yeah. Thanks but, God it's over, but that's right. <laughs> that's right. So, hell, thank you very much for being with us. Thank We you very much. You thank bet. you very much. You bet. Take care. And thank you for watching JSA TV. We'll see you very soon. Thank you guys.